Hello, hello everyone. So today I well, let me first tell you I learned something new that hummus is not what you do to the chickpeas, but hummus is is a chickpea. The word hummus is chickpea. But what we will do to the chickpeas today is we're gonna make a miso hummus spread. Hummus. Hummus. Not hummus. Hummus. Okay, so we're going to start off with a whole can or a whole jar of chickpeas. And I am toasting some just to put on top of my hummus bread. Okay, so to this, ready? We're going to put about a quarter cup of tahini, which is basically a sesame, a sesame paste. And it's so good. So good. To that, we're gonna add some beautiful organic miso, and I'm using a white sweet miso. Um, check your miso. If miso has alcohol in it, it's not gonna be one that has a probiotic in it. So you gotta make sure that it is a fermented a fermented miso that has the culture in it. If it doesn't have the culture, it's because they put alcohol and basically it's no longer uh, it's no longer a beneficial miso. It's more for flavor than it is for having the benefit which is the culture. Okay, so to this we're going to add about a third cup of miso. There we go, just a little more. And this is going to add, it's going to add that beautiful culture to your spread and it's going to make it that much better for you when you eat it. And it's going to give it that nice cheesy taste also. So to this we're going to add a little bit of olive oil. And let's say about maybe two tablespoons of olive oil. We're going to add some black pepper. Add black pepper right here. And we're going to add a little bit of salt. Go easy with the salt because the miso is going to be a little salty. And we're going to add some lemon. There we go. We're going to add just some of it. Not a lot. Maybe about, let's say, the rinds or the zest. Not the rinds, sorry. I always get that confused. Not that I get confused. I just it's a habit where I just call it rinds when it's actually the zest that I'm using. Okay, so we're gonna cut this in half and we're gonna use about the juice of half a lemon. Here we go. Now if you want you can add the um sorry. If you want, you can add the herbs right into your, your hummus bread, or you can actually add the herbs on top. And today we're going to add it on top rather than putting it right into our, um, our mixture. I will add a little bit of maple to this. Someone asked me, which one do I get? This is the one I get, and it's a dark, um, it's a dark amber color. There we go. I'm going to put just a little of it. And if we need more miso or tahini, we will add it a little later. So I'm just going to give this a mix. It's very simple. Uh, you could add, uh, actually, you know what? I'm going to add a little bit of heat to this. And I'm going to add a complete, this one's dried up, but it's a whole Thai chili. Get a nice and spicy. I'm okay with the spice because Erica and I will eat a spicy. There we go. Blend this up and we're going to make it nice and creamy. Now if you want it creamier, you know you want to add more liquids to this. So you could either add a little bit of water or you can add some extra tahini it'll make it nice and creamy 
So I'd say I put in just a little over a quarter cup of tahini. But remember, it's really up to you. If you want it more tangy, just squeeze in more lemon. And if you want it richer, you could add either more miso and uh, a little extra tahini, even olive oil. But we don't want to overdo the olive oil. We're going to try and keep it as low fat as we can. We put about two tablespoons, but if you look at the amount that you're making, the, you're really not going to get a lot of olive oil in your in your um, your hummus. Uh, plus, we're going to make a flat bread where we can pick up our hummus, and it's going to be uh, made with um, a kabuka squash and some flour, and then we're going to take that bread, and we're going to pick up this hummus, and it's going to be delicious. I'm just going to put just a little extra miso. Blend it up a little more. Mm hmm. Really, really good. I am going to put one, two teaspoons of the aquafaba and just a little extra lemon. Another two teaspoons. Remember, it really is up to you how you want to flavor your hummus. Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. There we go. Now, if I had cilantro, I'd probably be using that, but we finished off our cilantro, so I'm going to use a little bit of parsley, which goes great with hummus. Parsley is good in everything. There we go. It's always great to be able to put some of that beautiful probiotic in your food. Your kids will never know. They're just going to taste yumminess. But a little bit. Beautiful parsley. Chopped up nice and fine. A little bit of chili powder. And if you have people coming over, they're going to be just impressed on how beautiful your plate's going to be. Just a little bit of smoked salt on top. Smoked salt. Now, if you're okay with fats, you could add a drizzle of olive oil. Otherwise, you could leave it out. We're going to put some very good olive oil on this. There we go. And now we're going to start preparing our beautiful flatbread. Very simple to make. We're going to use one cup of organic whole wheat flour. You can use unbleached flour. It's really up to you. If you have spelt, you can use some spelt flour. And to this, we're going to put a little bit of charcoal. And what charcoal does, it basically pulls out any heavy metals from your body. And we're going to put about a teaspoon of charcoal. There we go. 
Okay, I'm going to use smoked salt, but you can use any salt you want. Just a little bit. We're not putting any fats in this. We're just going to leave this without. But if you want, again, you can put a little bit of olive oil. And I have some beautiful, beautiful roasted kabuka squash. Now, if you don't have kabuka squash, I guess you can replace this with a sweet potato. It would be just as good. So I'm just going to give this a mix for now. We're going to see how dark it's going to get. It should be nice and dark. Maybe just a little extra charcoal. Yeah, about a teaspoon and a half of charcoal. And that's going to make our beautiful flatbread nice and dark. So we have the salt, we have the flour, and now we're going to add our squash. Since this is creamy like butter, we're going to need, let's say, about a cup of this. Let me see if I can measure it. Doesn't have to be precise. And if you roast it, you get some nicer flavors when you're making your flatbread. In Italy, they use a lot of potatoes when they make bread, which is pretty impressive. And I am going to show you a recipe soon on how to make bread using potatoes and flour. That's going straight in my mouth. Okay, put this aside. So, two of these should give me, yeah, about a cup. There we go. Perfect. Mm -hmm. That's perfect. Okay, just get this out of the way. Remember, if you don't have kabuka, you can simply... I'm stuck in my face. Okay. I'm all over the place today. If you don't have kabuka, you could simply use a sweet potato. There we go. And now we're going to use our hands. We just start mixing it in, and then we're just going to simply use our hands, and we're going to make our dough. And this is going to be our vessel to pick up our delicious, delicious hummus. Now, if you're okay with fats, you can add some fat to this. And if you need a little extra moisture, you can either add more of your squash or you can add a little bit of water. But very simple to make. Nice little flatbread. So the recipe is very simple. Basically, one flour to one cup of either squash or potato. down There we go. 
Beautiful. We're going to take this and we're going to cut it. Depends how big you want your bread. We're going to cut it in eighths. And then we're going to roll it out flat and put it in a hot pan. It doesn't have to be perfectly round. It can be square. It really doesn't matter. And now we're going to stretch this out. Make sure your board is floured. And remember, it doesn't have to be perfect. I like them kind of rustic anyhow. But if you want to make them perfectly round, you can. There we go. There we go. I'm going to use my cast iron. Cast iron is going to pick up some of its nice little flavors. So I'm just going to push this one aside, add more flour, and on to the next one. Now remember, if you want to make these perfectly round, you've got to turn this into a nice little ball. And then make it round. But like I said, I really don't care how it looks like. Plain old flatbread. There we go. To the side it goes, and we're going to make another one. this in half. I've also made these where I've used fried onions. So good, so good. It really is what you want to do to it. Food is amazing. You could take one recipe and you can make a whole bunch of recipes out of one recipe. And never be afraid to play around with your food and get creative because when you love doing what you're doing, it's always gonna come out perfect. And that's how we serve this. Beautiful florets. 
flat bread. Fit for any party. And there you go guys, how simple was this? You want to have this on a Friday night instead of having chips while you're watching a movie? How about a nice beautiful bowl of hummus and some beautiful fresh flatbread? It is so much healthier for us. So I hope you like this recipe and if you give it a try, let me know. Come back, leave a comment, tell me how you like it. And guess what guys, I'm going to see you in my next video. For more videos like this, make sure to subscribe to Connie's Rawsome Kitchen. Give it a thumbs up and share it with your friends.